bad hair I believe is a mockery and a low-key attack on black women and the black women that wear weave um, versus their natural hair I think they went far and it's pretty far-fetched um, it's a parody I believe and it wasn't funny but it was supposed to have been a horror slash comedy and I didn't laugh one bit throughout the entire movie I just feel that it was like a dig at black women wearing weave so it starts off with Anna working at this TV network called culture and later known as cult and she notices everyone around her has straight hair and she notices the treatment that they're getting um, and she wants a promotion but the lady that she wanted a promotion from Edna she ends up demoting herself because she didn't like the way that the company was moving or where they were headed uh, she's late on her rent she's about to get evicted the landlord keeps harassing her and he increased the rent to about five hundred dollars she goes to her family house and her aunt I think ends up letting her get the money and her aunt also mentions that she should do something with her hair um, and also at work the new manager that took Edna's spot her name is Zora and she found out that Anna written a new block for the TV network and Anna she knows that Anna wants to be promoted but she also suggests that Anna should do something with her natural hair Anna also idolizes this upcoming pop star that's featured on the TV network culture her name is Sandra and that's who Kelly Rowland plays so she sees that she also has this big ridiculous wig on like her manager Zora has on as well so she sees this and that you know she I guess she's starting to feel pressured to go ahead and get her hair done and change it a little bit so this entire story took place supposedly in the late 80s and she goes to the salon the uh, price to get her sew in costs about $450 just the same amount of her rent which I thought was pretty like ridiculous that's a bit much and um, so she um, goes to the beautician and the beautician tells her that weaves and wigs is like magic <laughs> So while getting the weave in her hair, she's like whimpering, crying, and she can't sit still. There's a scar on the back of her head from when she was younger. Her cousin tried to put a texturizer on her hair and it shows this at the beginning of the movie. And that's where it takes off. But it shows that um, her cousin tried to put this texturizer on her hair and she supposedly followed all of the directions, but ended up burning Anna's scalp and leaving a permanent scar in the back so while the beautician was putting the sew in and it was showing that and it also showed now that this is where it started getting far-fetched that the weave started taking over her scalp and like binding to her roots in her scalp and she was crying and then remembering her past when she was younger and she just ended up fainting in the chair while she was getting her hair done and when she woke up her hair was finished she was a whole new Anna with a sew-in. She loved it, looked in the mirror, was all excited and happy. When she's sitting there, Sandra, the celebrity, the upcoming star, comes in the salon as well. And her weave is all knotted up and tangled up. And But her eyes looked really possessed and demonized. And um, she tells Anna, do not get this weave wet. Like, don't ever get your weave wet. And she had Usher on the side of her, which he played Jermaine. Anyway, so she goes back to work and she gets all these smiles and notices and people uh, paying attention to her, looking at her differently. But she's like patting her head throughout the whole time she's at work. I guess her head still hurts. And um, her ex even uh, asked her out talking about, I got tickets to go see Janet Jackson while she's walking through uh, the office trying to, you know, pull her coattail. So anyway, she started noticing that the weaves, the weave in her head started doing strange things her first day back. And uh, so she gets a paper cut and the weave gets in her skin, in the cut, and then she starts pulling out the hair, the weave, and it just keeps coming out like, it was like, oh my God, like that was, that was crazy. 
Uh, it was a little far-fetched. I think all the things that were happening here, especially with the weave, were a bit far-fetched. Um, but she kept patting her head again throughout the day. And Julius, she found, finds out actually later on that Julius, her ex, is messing with her new boss, Zora. And he's trying to work his way up to the top by, you know, messing with the manager, the new manager. And because she noticed that he's getting all this special treatment or whatnot. So, anyways, another thing she notices about her hair weave is that, uh, well, actually she doesn't, I don't think she even notices this, but she was sitting down at the table at home with her um, cousin, they were talking, and she happened to turn her head, and her hair fell in her plate, and it was like ketchup and fries there, and as soon as she did that, and turned back around and showed like the, the uh, weave, snatched the food, like, and, like ate it, and like it was hungry. Also, her landlord, you know, he kept harassing her because she was late on her rent and she was about to get evicted. But he tried to rape her and the hair weave ends up attacking him and kills him in her apartment. I'm not sure if they're trying to like scare black women into not wearing weaves or wigs, but it does seem like a low key attack. Unless it is true, like, and if they, like that book that she kept reading, um, it was about a slave and the slave going to some tree and thinking it was moss and she ended up putting the moss in her hair but it was kind of find out it was um something that some witches were doing they were like gathering moss and the moss needs enough blood to take over somebody's body so if that is like true then um i can see this being a legit story but it was it just seems like a low-key attack it was all made for shits and giggles yeah so unless they have any historical facts or something real or real accounts of we making people do things then that'd be a different story but i mean you don't see rapists or murderers um wearing what wearing hair weave and committing crime so it was just so far-fetched i don't i didn't understand the purpose of it of the whole movie and then another part shows with her in the bathroom and the weave like going down in her pants I don't know if it was like trying to penetrate her really crazy and then the weave started like blowing all over the place and it like fixed itself and put itself back in place to where she didn't even have to brush it or comb it yeah so anyway so she goes to a um, party it was like a work party and uh Edna's there and she notices a difference with Anna and her new Eve and also uh Jermaine Usher he comes over to talk to Anna but they get interrupted from the guy in the suit but he was about to actually tell her that he noticed something strange or a little off with Sandra Kelly Rowland but he didn't get a chance to because he was just um interrupted and so she hooks up with her ex after the work party and while they're having sex her weave ends up killing him because uh, it gets jealous and asking him while she's having sex she was like her head was like some spinning it was like on some exorcist shit and she starts asking him did you think about me and all these things did you love me and why did you leave me ends up killing him um right there on the bed and she ends up leaving going out crying at this point i'm thinking like just stop this movie it's like too far-fetched like with this weave it's getting out of control so then she tries to uh end up trying to get the hair weave out of her hair and she goes to a salon where edna's at and as soon as the lady tries to cut her weave off the weave gets mad and, and making the lady trip and fall and hit her head it also starts coming after Edna as she tries to run out of the salon. And it kills another lady also in the salon. So it killed all three ladies in the salon. And Anna leaves all scared and she can't believe again what the weave just done. And she goes back to her workplace and she sees Zora, her new manager, also another dead employee. So, but Zora's telling her that something's bad happened. That we've taken so many lives. So they're both talking and telling you know each other they've been experiencing the same thing because of their weave so as soon as Zora tries to cut her weave out of her hair the weave won't let her and it ends up strangling her and snapping her neck killing Zora so and then Anna runs off crying 
um, she goes to her dad house asking more about uh, this book that she ended up picking up earlier in the movie from his house so she's trying to just get more information in history of the hair moss that's what it's called the witch's moss and they need enough blood to take over somebody's body and it was a slave i guess she wanted long hair and she used the moss as a wig but it ended up killing her massa and she found out that it was moss from witches magic and spells and how from history how um indian tribes and they uh could use the hair uh, against their enemy by putting spells on it if somebody you know came to get it or use it or something like that but he wasn't really that much help so she returned to work the next day and so people were trying to look for zora they can't find her so they need a host for the tv network and so she ends up anna ends up getting the spot and she she's hosting for the uh tv show tv network called live and she sees zora the a spirit of zora obviously in the audience and also in a window of the office later on when she's talking to zora assistant about um where could zora be at a hair weave out of nowhere just starts attacking zora's assistant and the weave starts turning into like Zora and she like she becomes like the master the master weave lady like she's like controlling everybody or something and um so she starts seeing all these heads of her friends that has weaves or died and they all taunting her and she's just running all over the office because there's hair weave everywhere literally on the ceiling on the floor and it's just chasing her all around the office and it's like the battle of, of hair weaves. It's crazy. Um, so then so, um, Anna ends up finding a gun under a desk. And it, it's not even a gun. It's a gun with a flame. So it's a lighter. It's like a lighter. And she lights up a cigarette. And then she puts the gun up to the sprinklers on the ceiling to make the uh, sprinklers go off. And so the sprinklers go off. Everybody, Everything is wet all the hair weaves that was chasing her is wet they all fall on the floor and they can't move they're like stuck and like help me you know and um because they've been wet so remember what kelly Rowland said sandra she said never get this weave wet so anyways that happened and um so the next day it just shows her moving out of the apartment she was in and it shows that uh, suit, the guy that was in the suit, that um, he pretty much was a top exec at the TV network. And it just showed him, the guy in the suit, the white guy, and it shows, it goes back to showing when the slave was getting the moss and the massa was like having the ladies carry buckets of moss around and then reverted back to the um to now showing the white guy in the suit that works at the tv network it showed him having people and um gathering the same moss from that tree using it as hair weave and uh putting it on a truck and anna remembered that she's seen that same truck parked out front of the um i believe the office and so anyways pretty much saying that the top exec white guy he knew everything that was going on about this moss which was not really hair weave it was moss and he knew where it derived from because he was most likely the masses son and he took over the business and it was a business and they were selling this moss as hair weave to black women and making pretty much black women kill themselves with this weave knowing that it was killing them and other people so, and that was pretty much it. That was the end of the movie. And that was, I guess, the moral of the whole movie. Where black women are giving their money to white massa. And they are, in return, the weave is killing them. It's committing mass murders and crimes all over the world. I don't, this movie was, I think it was stupid, honestly. And it was far-fetched and it was just dumb. Like, and I think it was, they tried to make, they trying to make it sound like it's that deep of black women wearing weave. Like, come on. 
out of everything else that's going on in the world and that's happening and that does happen weeds like i mean i don't know i don't i think it was a bad taste for comedy like they could have did something else that's funny or you know there's a lot of things that um, black people do that's entertaining and that's funny but hair weave come on just another low-key attack i believe so that's what i uh that's my review for this movie bad hair that just came out <laughs>